Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and this is episode one in working with multiplayer using Fishnet in Unity. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to Fishnet uh, on the Unity Asset Store. You want to go find Fishnet and you want to add it to my assets. You've got to make sure that you're logged in. Also, just for a quick reference, if you scroll down, you, the link for documentation is right here, which is really useful if you're facing issues or just want to read up more on how it really works. But other than that, you should be able to follow this guide and it should work just fine. Now, when you are back in Unity, you can go to the package manager and find my assets. In here, you should be able to find Fishnet networking and you should be able to just click import and we're just going to import everything. Now, once you're done importing it, you will see added fish networking uh, defines to player settings and default prefab generator updated. So now you can see that we have this fishnet folder right here. And let's open up this and go to example and prefabs and you'll find this uh, network manager prefab. We just drag this into our scene and this is actually pretty much uh, the net basic networking setup. Now this will also include a canvas which will be able to enable whether you want to join as the client or the server. Uh, you can see that's the canvas that's under the network manager. But in the network manager you'll be able to see there's a player spawner script already attached and you also need some spawn points. So let's just first of all make those spawn points. So I'm just going to make a parent object called world and let me just make a plane which is going to be the ground. Just going to make sure world is centered. And I'm just going to make a quick folder for materials and a quick folder for scripts and a quick folder for prefabs. And in materials, I'm just going to make a material for the ground. And I'm also going to make a quick material for the player. Now under the world, I'm also going to make a parent object for the spawn points. And I'm just going to in here define the spawn points. I'm just going to call it spawn point. I'm just going to put it above the ground and I'm just going to place them in some different spots here. That should be enough. If we go to the networking manager, we can then just drag down the spawn points here to add them to the list of spawn points. And then we don't have to look any more of these. Now we need to set up the player. So I'm just going to make a uh, an empty actually and just call it player. And under that, I'm going to add a capsule and call that body. This is because I like to be able to differentiate them uh, from one another. Now let's center the player, put him a little bit above the ground. And I'm just going to make it a player controller, um, or sorry, a character controller um, with a script that I am just going to call player controller. I'm going to add that script to the player, like so. And I'm going to open up the script. Now I already have a script that is set up ready for multiplayer, but I'm of course gonna explain to you what part of it. So this is basically just my sort of base setup for a multiplayer project for a character controller movement. Now, there's only a few things that are actually really important. The first thing is you're using fishnet.connection and fishnet.object. These are pretty much your main uh, two imports. Now the class instead of mono behavior is gonna be network behavior. And you'll need this for every script that's gonna interact with the network. And the last thing that's important is that, uh, at least the way that I do it, is I don't like to spawn multiple cameras. I feel like that's a mess. So instead, I actually only just hold the main camera and I make sure uh, that I set the main camera to our own local player. So each local player will grab the main camera and set it as his own. So that way there's only ever instantiated one camera. Now, the way that I do this is I make sure it happens as soon as we start the server, which means it's actually before the start function. This is done by writing public override void on start client. And then in the beginning of this, you need base dot on start client. This is just a very basic setup of this. And then in my case, I've just done if base is owner, which means if we are if, if we are on the character right now that we are the owner of, we want something to happen. Which in this case, I've set the player camera, which is something I've defined up here, to be equals to camera.main, because that's the only camera we have. I set the player camera transform position to a transform that I actually set up in my script out here. I don't think I saved it. So as you can see here, I've just set up some base values as well in the script that is already there, which are the ones I found working for me. Now let me just apply the material for the player on him. And let's also for that sake, just put on uh, some visors, which is something I like to be able to see which direction is looking. It's going to make this 0 0.8, 0 0.3, and 0. Now we're going to put this in the face of him, like so. 
And now we can also see which direction he's looking. Now on the player, we also want one last thing, which, oh, a few last things. We also want to make sure that he's a network object, which you can see he already is here. And because the script makes sure to add network object. And then there's also the network transform component, which is pretty much what just networks his change of position and his change of uh, uh, rotation. So I wasn't really done explaining in him the script. The last thing that I also do on the onStart client function is that I also make sure to disable all the other player controller scripts. So this means that if we are not the owner of the player controller script, we will disable it, which is because we don't want to be able to control each other's players. Now, this is actually the whole networking setup. The rest of this script is completely single player based, which is something that would completely work in single player. Um, so this is basically the only networking setup we actually do in order to just make this work on the server. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make him or our player a prefab. I'm going to remove him from here, go to the network manager, set our player and the player prefab. And let's and uh, let's go and build the project so we can test it in multiplayer. So now the game is done building. So I'm going to start on the Unity editor here and let me just make it a bit bigger for you guys. Like so and I'm going to just start by clicking on server and then client. And now we've joined as a client. So you can see I can just see the vice up there, but that's fine. And now let me go on to the other one here and just say, hey, I just want to join as a client. And here you can see that the networking is working just fine. I can see the other player here, which is the inspector. And I can, uh, you can see in the background on the inspector view on the, the Unity editor that I can also see my character moving around. So this is basically the movement and the basic setup of the networking done. And in the next guide, we're going to work on understanding how we can send data to each other through what's called remote procedure calls. So I hope I see you there and I really hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or any issues, write them in the comments and I'll do my absolute best to help you out. And uh, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.